You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tiffany the... Haddish and Kevin Hart. <laughs> in Yay! the building. Hey, why are you screaming, man? <laughs> I don't know. Relax. Yeah, that was, that was yeah, very I'm, I'm happy to see them, too, but damn, bro. Energetic. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin here complaining about chairs that he bought, saying that the chairs won't go up no higher. I'm not complaining about the chairs that I bought. I just don't understand when you guys know I'm coming. You should have my setting ready. You know what? You bought you those bought chairs. It's not about what I bought. It's about what I need. <laughs> I told you that. It's just, I'm not saying that you got to make it a public thing, but put a, put a fucking pillow on there. Tiffany you want seems a pillow? fine. Give a pillow. That's too late. Pillow, Tiffany's fine with her chair. Yeah, my torso's longer. Yeah, Tiffany's taller. <laughs> it's fine. It's, let's not make a thing out of it. I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> how, how, how are you guys doing? How are I don't you know doing? What, I don't know where to start with y'all. Let's start. Let's start. going on? Night school, let's first start. of all. Let's start there. Do the business. Let's start there. Night school, hitting theater, September 20. Excited. Uh, I don't think I could be more excited. Why? I'll tell you why. Uh, first you movie. You got damn right. I did. You got damn right. Let him handle this. Shit. You got damn right. To himself. I can segue Kevin in and out of whatever the hell I want to talk about <laughs> smoothly too. Uh, reason why is because it's the first movie underneath my production umbrella, Heartbeat Productions. Uh, taking it a step further, you know, from just being the talent, turning the business, the business notch up, and in doing so, I wanted to. Put myself in a position to win, so I teamed up with my guy Will Power Packer again. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our seventh movie together, four number ones, two number twos. Hopefully we're talking about one more number one. Mm -hmm. And coming off of a number one success, I said, dude, it makes no sense to not have Tiffany Haddish be a part of my first movie. Hey. Especially understanding her story and where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. So we casted Tiffany in the movie. Uh, along with an, another amazing group of actors and actresses. Uh, the list is too long to name, but it's so many. And, you know, right now we're talking about something that was built from the ground up that I got to witness, that I got to be a part of. And and right now the conversations of being a partner to studios instead of a work for hire is a real one. So it's an exciting time for me. And it's an exciting time for Tiffany as well. How much money have you and Will made together so far? It's a lot of money, buddy. Seven, six movies? <laughs> a lot of money. We don't need to get in the numbers. It's up, okay. It's, uh, <laughs> it's up there. It's up there. Now, why night school? Have you, have you ever been to night school, either of you? I can tell you the, the, the whole story behind night school and... Uh, and, and the reason behind it is, is something that I think people will be able to re relate to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a movie about second chances. Mm -hmm. In life, so many people do things the first time around and may or may not get it right and then doing so, you feel like it's over. Mm -hmm. You feel like I've lost all opportunity. There is no way to win. In this particular case, education is the forefront of the story. And so many people that don't embrace education properly end up going back to have to do it again. And what you find out is when you embrace it the second time, you do it correctly and the opportunities in life are still there, and it may even be more. Uh, this is a movie that embraces that. This is a movie that highlights that, and we do it uh, from a funny perspective, but that people can relate to. God I'm damn. proof of that. I got my diploma in night school. I'm so well spoken, and that's <laughs> what we're gonna, so as we go on. Yeah, so How are you guys as students in school in real life? Mm, I was okay. I was all right. You, you know, uh, I did. I did. I had a two point five grade average. There you go. Mm -hmm. Is that good? That's not all right. That's two point five. That's like that's <laughs> I graduated. <laughs> I graduated. I had a lot of credits because I went to summer school every year. Right. So you can see my level. You had to go to summer school every year too. Did <laughs> because, you fail? No, because I didn't want to uh, get in any trouble. And it was boys in summer school. Uh, okay. <laughs> you can see my level of education. I celebrated the two point five. Yes. <laughs> I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, now listen, we hear these conversations about equal pay in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and Tiff and Kev, y'all both are on the bill. Mm -hmm. How does that work out? Uh, look, I know what the conversations <clears throat> are. Oh. Um, you know, look, I'm I'm all about the 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 female the female growth. You know, especially in entertainment. You know, I think that that women and and the voices that are coming from these women should be heard. And the mm -hmm. opportunity should be given. So um, what about, what about that money, part? though? Yeah. Was it, it, was it equal pay? I, I don't think so. But you know what? He's producing on it and it whatnot. Is, oh, okay, you know, okay. but he he we both just got houses. You know, his house is in the hills somewhere. We can't <laughs> find it. My house is in South Central. Okay. <laughs> 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 no, look, I, I think that the conversation is one that needs to be had. Mm -hmm. And now that it's being had, you're going to see more opportunities for women to get what they've been requesting and what they deserve. Um, I think it's all it's all project dependent. It's all about um, the level of stars that you're dealing with, and you know you you have to understand. How that, do you know what your level is? Though? Well, within box office draw, what people ignore is that within a talent. This box office draw and this box office success. Tiff is the biggest star in the movie, so she should be 
You know what? If that's what people feel, I did wow. just win a Emmy. Emmy. Then you I say you, did, you didn't just I see can't. a radio personality get roasted early this week. Oh, huh? Okay, keep it up. Keep and pushing. Let's go. Let's go. I like this. Keep going. Listen, I, would, I would bow down to my sister. That was the case. See, let me let me tell you the difference. I'll tell you the difference. I'll tell you the difference, you the difference. You the difference. You the difference in OK Heart, and I use this as a segue. Okay, the difference. The difference in me. If that was the case, <laughs> there is no reason to to put a dimmer on that light. Mm, the reason why I say that is because I, I've been there. I've, I'm I'm there. I sit in the chair. I've sat in this chair for a long time. Naturally, there's other people that will come behind and will surpass wherever you are. In this business, when that happens, you support it. Especially, especially when you're coming from a position where there's been a demand for people of color to get a shot. Mm -hmm. So here's my frustration, because I know you're going to get into it. Let me tell you my frustration. Can I ask you a question first? Uh, no, no, can't okay, go, 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 go. Here's my frustration, mind. okay? I'm going to tell you what's been on my mind, what's been on my heart heavy. I was just trying to sell the movie first. I want to talk about the movie's sold. Okay. The movie's going <laughs> to be sold, okay? <laughs> Night School, September 28th. God damn it. Go check it out, check it out. All right, now I want to get to what's really bothering me. Okay. I want to ask, I want to ask black people what we want. What do we want? We, we complain that people of color weren't getting opportunities in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. We were getting ignored for the Oscars, for the Emmys. Mm -hmm. It was a big thing. After that big thing, people of color got recognized for their hard work, for their efforts and run awards. People of color also won Emmys. Mm -hmm. People of color are now being given opportunities to star, to lead in various projects. Well, just the ugly people, okay. according to some. It, just according to some. Okay. I when ugly. the people of color, <laughs> when the people of color get these opportunities, At all. why are the people of color the ones that are tearing the people that are getting the opportunities down? Mm -hmm. My frustration comes from you don't realize when I preach about the crabs in the barrel mentality that eventually we have to take responsibility for our actions. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking at people that share my craft, I'm going to bring up the people that Cat Williams name, mm -hmm. Little Rel, Gerard Carmichael. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hannibal Burris, myself, Tiffany Haddish. Correct. Little Rel is seeing so much success after doing his special Relevant. He went on to do Get Out. He now has a show that he's producing and starring in on Fox. Gerard Carmichael had his own show that he starred, wrote, produced. Gerard Carmichael was on to a second special. Hannibal Burris saw success within comedy specials and is now doing various movies where he's getting the opportunity to have features and to have a mm -hmm. presence. Me, Kevin Hart. The guy that sits on top right now have taken advantage of all the money that I have. I've shot over 56 specials for the up-and-coming generation of comedy. Why? Because I'm trying to create opportunities for others. So rather than complaining yeah. about it, mm -hmm. I'm fixing it. Mm. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Mm -hmm. I also take full responsibility for any and everything that I've done in the fucking business. Mm -hmm. Good or bad. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from, you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. Cat was in that position at one you point. You were the guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You fucked off promo shoots. You fucked off your promo fucking uh, trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios stopped fucking with you. Why was he a risk? He chose drugs. Oh, okay. Take responsibility for what you chose and say, you know what? I got to fix me and I'm going to come back and I'm going to stand up for comedy. Mm -hmm. So when you say Tiffany Haddish doesn't deserve or isn't really a comedian, and these other women have worked hard, which they have. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to Melanie Cam Camacho. Shouts out to Lou Nell. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to Leslie Jones, who are all underneath the umbrella of Cat Williams. Cat Williams, have you ever used your platform to fucking bring the people that were under you up? Mm. You haven't. So because you haven't, don't shit on those that now are. I've used my platform, and I've brought my guys and girls up. Mm -hmm. The brand of Kevin Hart is a brand that's expanded so fucking far. Whether you like me or not, my presence of comedy will forever be felt because mm. I'm a fucking boss. Mm. I sit on the top of it and the opportunities that I'm giving are the ones that I'm creating. Mm. So take responsibility for what you did. You fuck you. Nobody else did. You don't hear Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, the Kings of Comedy, Seinfeld. You don't hear George Lopez, mm -hmm. Eddie Griffin. You don't hear fucking... Uh, uh, who who else can I go down the, the road of other comedians? Steve Martin, Martin Short. You don't hear Naive. the guys that got on top mm -hmm. and that made it by doing what they love complain about the people that are coming under them. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because they're happy with themselves. Mm. Don't blame everybody else for your shit. 
Don't shit on my sister light because you're not happy with your shit. This shit is earned. It's not given. I don't give a fuck if you're a Tiffany Haddish fan or not. It's earned. Mm -hmm. Tiffany Haddish got years in the game. It's not an accident that Tiffany Haddish got an opportunity to star in a movie. It's not an accident that that character popped in the movie. Written or not written, a character has to pop it. And he even acknowledged the years that you've put in before that. Now I want to ask That's you, Tiffany, because so you were very classy in your response on social media, because the first thing I thought was, that's effed up. What's Tiffany going to say? Because that has to be hurtful when somebody says something like that. Especially, I'm sure you were a fan of his, you know, at some point. I still am a fan of his. I think he's hilarious. So what did you think when you heard that before you responded? Well, I thought, I was like, dang, what'd I do to him? Did I fuck his man? And then I was like... <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. You're funny. You That's what stupid. I thought at first. <laughs> That's what I always think when people say mean things. I always think that because I figure right. it gotta be. I must have took something from me. I must have did something to me. And then I realized I never did nothing to that man. And then I and then when I started like really listening to it, I was like, oh, he got his facts wrong. He's obviously not paying attention to me. And somebody must have been complaining to him about me mm -hmm. or whatever. And maybe he, he felt some type of way. I don't know. I I just feel like well. You know, it is what it is. I, I don't, I'm not tripping. I'm not mad. Right. I'm not upset. But did he apologize? Because we seen a picture there. Yeah, what's the first thing yeah, he, he said to you? He, he, he apologized. You. He said, listen, listen, listen. Let me explain what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then he <laughs> explained himself. And then I was just like, well, you know. It, what did he explain? Yeah, like, what kind this, of explanation this, he can you He just said, I give? hate it. Huh? He just said, I hate it. No, he didn't say did that. Did he say he was high? I want to step in because that? I'm going to let no. my sister keep it classy. Yeah. He just Somebody kicked my sister ball over the fence. I want it back. It doesn't matter what he mad. said. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter yeah. what the apology was. So you didn't like the apology. It's not about the apology. And I want to get this very clear. I want to make it very clear. Cat Williams is an amazing, talented comedian, which is why I'm so frustrated. I sit from a fucking, from afar and I admire the man's talent. Mm -hmm. I don't like that you said anything negative about a woman of color that's getting her shot. Mm. Say it to me. Say it to me. I'll take it all. Hate me. You do seem to be more offended listen, about listen, this than I've I, ever seen. I have, I have sat back. Mm -hmm. I have forever been the humble guy. Mm -hmm. I have time to not be humble today. Mm. I have time to fact check everything he said because the world of Cat Williams is a fictional world. Is he selling that many tickets? No, no, yeah, let's run this. No, no, run this. Yeah. <laughs> no, he said. No, yeah, he said on his last talk. <laughs> I was like, he's... when was she married to a white man? Mm -hmm. I went back. I Google. I was like, because I know. I've been I pro see... proposed to by a white man before, okay. and then found out he was really black when we did that DNA test. But it is what it is. So you weren't married to a white man? No, no. I know been. that, but yeah. whatever. Now, yeah. now these tickets. Now, he said he sold yes. two point four million, million tickets, tickets. False. on his last tour. False. That's more than Beyonce and Jay Z. Right? That's more than Justin Bieber and Justin Timberlake. <laughs> That's more than Billy Beyonce. Joel, the Eagles. <laughs> That's more than Beyonce and Justin Timberlake combined. Okay, do you understand how many tickets two point four million tickets are? Yes. <laughs> right now, right now, mm -hmm. all this stuff is is Googleable. Is Google? You can Google it. Mm -hmm. It's all fucking researchable information. I am sitting on one point three million tickets sold. Shouts out to all the comedians that have given me the opportunity to get here because I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without them and their hard work. Mm -hmm. There is nobody close to me in ticket sales and comedy. And you're on a worldwide I am, tour. I am worldwide. I am on par with the likes of your Bruno Mars, your Jay-Z and Beyonce. Okay? I'm up there with those people. So in comedy, it's unheard of to get those numbers. Mm -hmm. To throw out numbers like 2.4 million is ridiculous. That's false. It's not even close. Also, to say 15 consecutive 100 city tours, it's false. Where, what are you doing? So, so where did you do the new stuff? When did you ever work on something? Consecutive means in a row. Mm -hmm. Where? Where? There's a Forbes list. Mm -hmm. Every year that comes out. Go back to 2007. Go back to 2006. Cat Williams has never been on it. Go back to my last five years in comedy. I have one year where I got number one. This year I'll be number one again. I have one year where I was number three. The other years I'm number six. I'm number seven. These lists are researchable. The people on social media, on the internet, feed into words. You feed into diction. You don't feed into facts. Another fact, a hard fucking fact, Cat Williams did not own all the specials. He trashes the white man. The white man owns your content. You don't own it. So Cat Williams don't own none no. of the specials? No! False. Is this False. Is this provable? I am now... Coming to get my sister's ball that was kicked <laughs> over the fence. I think you got it. <laughs> I'm only saying this because of how you attack innocent people. Yes. Attack me. Once again, attack me. I got the armor. I'm bulletproof. Say it to me. I'm going to ignore it. I'm only doing this because of what was said 
about innocent people that are working hard on their craft. And Tiffany does have an hour stand-up special She's on got Showtime two. from the hood to Hollywood. She's got two. <laughs> She's got two. Also, Netflix specials are not Netflix specials are not given by what you sell on the road. That's the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard in my life. That's not. Another fact. So it's not about tickets? No. What's that it's about? It's not about tickets. It's about your brand. It's about your, your return. Mm. If I'm a business and I want to invest a high amount of money in you, how am I getting my money back? Mm. Everybody can't demand the money if you can't justify how I'm getting my money back. Think business, people. Netflix is a business. All these announcements came out for the specials. I kept mine on the wraps just because. Netflix gave me $40 million. What? Whoa. This Man. is this is a fact. We need better chairs. Listen. <laughs> yeah, we need fact. better chairs. And we need new laptops. We need laptops, laptops too. <laughs> and I would like an <laughs> iPad. <laughs> you know, Charging. A car if you feel like <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. I told you he bought a new house. I got to pay taxes. I got to pay taxes. I got to pay taxes. I got to pay The point that I'm making is that that's information. This is all researchable information if you go look for it. I just chose to keep it to myself because I don't care. I'm only saying this now because I'm fact-checking what was put out as fiction, okay? That's not how they give it. That's not how they do deals. With that being said, once again, when you look at all the comedians that are up and coming, young, old, whatever, as a comedian that's sitting in a position of power, if you got any financial growth, any financial success, put your money where your mouth is and you change it. So if you got a team of people, which he does, which are very funny. Once again, shout out to Red Grip, mm-hmm. Marie Camacho, Lunell, mm-hmm. Leslie Jones that was there for a minute. I know them all. I love all those people, but I can't name one of their jokes. It, does, it doesn't matter. I would saying. never shit on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Instead, you- I would say, <laughs> take your money and create opportunities for them so they can pop within your brand and make you better. Okay? All the negativity that I receive is from Cat Williams and Mike Epps. Ask yourself why. Those two people that fucked themselves over. They Mike was in the same too? movie. They was in, God, I don't give they a got shit today. The I same got movie. time to talk you, all the shit today. What'd you say, Tiff? All the shit. I said they both got their break in the same movie. They both popped on the same movie. Friday. Friday after next. So what happened with Mike Epps? Friday, Friday, Mike I'm goes? saying in general, where does all the negativity come that comes to me? Do you well, get along with any of your peers? I get Michael along Blackson, with everybody. Michael yeah. Blackson and you had a little thing. But me and Mike up. Blackson are fine. That yeah, was more about me and Mike Blackson knowing each other for real. You let the this fiction shit take you out of the the realm of saying you really know me. Mm. So at that moment, Mike, I'm like, dude, you know me. Like, enough is enough. You know that at this point, when all this shit is going down, you know how fucking serious it is. Mm. You know me. Like, we really are friends. I get it from everybody else. I don't give a shit. But you different. You know me. Mm. That's where me and Mike shit came in. But me and Mike are fine. I'm saying negativity. I'm saying shit talk. I'm saying the constant downing of people that sit in the position of success that have worked hard for it comes from people that have yet to realize their fuck up. Mm. This is simply me calling you out on your fuck ups. Stop pointing at other people. Stop pointing at Hollywood for your fuck up. Shit is changing. I sit as the biggest fucking comedy star in the world right now on an international level. Box office and goddamn Mm -hmm. touring. Stop talking to me about the opportunities that we're not getting because I'm creating them. Your fuck up. Take responsible for your fuck up. Don't kick my sister ball over the fence no more. Why are you, I can't, you talking to your kids? Because they <laughs> kick <laughs> her ball <laughs> over the fucking <laughs> fence. I would never want to get in trouble in your house. I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset because I know this I'm girl's upset. story. Y'all don't understand where my frustration mm-hmm. come from. Homeless. You was there for her when she was homeless? Like, fuck yeah. yeah, fuck the, the joke mm-hmm. of the money that I gave her. I'm talking about a real grind. Right. Homeless, no mm-hmm. bed, back seat, watching your ass in bathroom sinks. And now you finally get millions for a movie and now we want to go. You ain't this and you ain't that. Get the fuck out of here, man. Applaud her first. And Damn she right. seems so grateful all the time. And you have nothing bad to say Absolutely. about anybody. I've never seen Tiffany Haddish come at anybody, be negative. It seems like you're always supportive. Of yeah, other I people. am supporting. If I got something bad to say about somebody, I say it to them in their face first. Mm-hmm. Straight up. Why are you so that. loving and forgiving, Tiffany? Keep, <laughs> keep me loving, Tiffany. Right? Why, why, why are you so okay. loving and forgiving the people who try to discredit you? Because they obviously are hurting. They mm-hmm. need some. They need mm-hmm. some love. They, there's, there's something wrong with them for them to even come at me. I never did nothing to them. Right. I never said anything bad about them. So there's something that's personal. And obviously they're crying for help. So I'm going to be kind and I'm going to keep it pushing and, and not absorb whatever they're trying to put out. We already reached out to you and apologized to you too. Is that true? No. No. Oh. No. Where you get that from? You I don't, I don't know. Say that. 
<laughs> no, and and I want to make this I want to make this perfectly clear. This is not a Kevin Hart versus Cat thing. This is not that. I don't mm-hmm. I don't give I don't give that much of a fuck. I don't I don't have time to care that much. Mm-hmm. This is a I'm shining a light on what we complain about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We complain that we don't have. Then we get and now we tear down those that are getting what we said we don't have. Make a decision. I'm going to ride with whatever decision we make. Y'all on a platform. Help me figure out so I know what we're sticking to. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. So if I'm wrong, tell me now so I can take the money out of my Laugh Out Loud network. So I can stop trying to produce these movies and get diversity looks and make a multicultural cast pop. Because I thought that's what we wanted. Mm-hmm. So if it's not what we want, tell me. And I'll pull back. And I'll go back and I'll do what was being done that we didn't want. So if we're going to fix a problem, then help a fucking problem become fixed by being a part of the solution and not the problem. When you are down and you attack those that are now becoming a part of the solution, you're the fucking problem. It's interesting that they always say the white man gives people in Hollywood stuff. As nah. if we haven't been watching y'all bust y'all ass for years. Absolutely. I can say that there has been a heavy, heavy separation within races and opportunity in the entertainment business. I can say all the complaints that have been given over the past are not only correct, but but worthy of the attention that they got, Mm -hmm. okay? Within all the movements, within all the conversation, within we need more, Mm -hmm. you goddamn right. I get it. I was a person that was told movies can't translate overseas with black leads in comedy. I was told that to my face. I begged for those opportunities. I pushed for them, I got them, and now you see more movies with people of color in the lead position getting those opportunities because we're pushing for it. So if we want to see change, then we got to support those that are fighting for the change. So in every way, shape, or form, everything that I'm saying right now is about solution. I'm putting my money where my mouth is, guys. You're not going to hurt me. I got it. I got it for real. And, and Tiff, You're not going to hurt me. They talk about people giving people stuff. You had to fight for an audition for Girls Trip, right? Yeah, I fought for that. <laughs> for that. I was constantly on my agent about getting me that audition. And... I got it. And then I went in like four times. Mm-hmm. And then finally I got the job. Mm. But yeah. I mean, I was just thinking about it. Like every person that's ever given me an opportunity in this business or fought for me or fought with me to get a job or put me on something has been black. It From my experience. Anybody who's given me a great opportunity where I've made some money has been black. Mm-hmm. Um, so to me, when they say, oh, the white man, whatever, it, to me, I don't I don't see it that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've it's been black or Hispanic, uh, Middle Eastern, but mostly black people have helped me. And it, when it comes to stand up, it's, you know, I'm supported by not it's like everybody, I feel like. And my job in this business, I feel like. To me, my position, I come from bringing joy. And when people are like, oh, she not funny, you not funny. I, I don't care. And my comedy not for you. You know, I'm I'm here to not make the whole wide world laugh. I'm here to make the people that buy tickets laugh. That's all I care about. And, you know, it's a perfect segue to to go back <coughs> to our reason for being here. Nice girl. Yeah, because I, I just want to say, just, salute to Will Packer for being a, a great director. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's in the back like, Packer. Just hear me. Well, just well, hear me out. When I, <laughs> when I say perfect segue, I'm saying... When I talk about second chances, Mm -hmm. when I talk about the purpose of the movie, when I talk about why the movie was created, when I talk about the vision behind it, it's to motivate and inspire. Yes, you're going to laugh, but there's a message within it. Within everything that I'm saying, yo, second chances are valuable. Mm -hmm. Within everything that I said directed towards Kat and what was said, yo, you got a second chance. Your people still ride with you. They still fuck with you. They always will because you're talented. You're talented. Acknowledge that, yo, you know what? The first time I may have done some shit. Second time I'm coming back stronger than other people. Watch the road back to Cat Williams getting back to the top. Oh, you mm-hmm. mean like with, with him winning the Emmy? What? Yes. Okay. Like that's like that's your mom. That's, that's hey beautiful. man. He didn't write that role, by the way, though. I'm just Listen, saying. Whoever, look, the same thing no, he's accusing other I'm, people of. He didn't I'm write the role here, in Atlanta. I'm, I'm not saying. here to attack that. I'm mm-hmm. saying as a fan, I would embrace you, acknowledging whatever and going. That's a second chance. Within my movie, you'll see second chances become highlighted. You'll see them be celebrated. Night school is bigger than the last that you're going to get. There's a message. And any content, Mm -hmm. any content being developed that comes from Heartbeat Productions will have an underlying tone that you will be able to take with you because that's what I'm trying to do 
from a production standpoint. So this script came to you first, and no, then you brought it to... No, the script was developed by yeah. me oh, and my team. Oh, it was developed by you yes. and everything. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. you wrote it. Yes, yeah. ground up. Harry Nobody... Ratchford, shout out Harry Ratchford, Joey Wells, Matt Kellard, Glenda Richardson, uh, John Hamburg, Nicholas Stoller, all amazing talent writers that came in and helped in within the development of the script. Uh, done underneath the heartbeat umbrella. Mm -hmm. Then after that, taken to my guy, Will Packer, read it, loved it, took it to Universal, sold it. Universal said, let's do it. We did it. And now we're releasing it. That's the, the steps within development. But what I love the most is that you're seeing something that can be branded and that can be underlined as what Kevin Hart content will look like. I want to be a partner. I've been a work for hire for a long time. So now it's about becoming a partner. Mm. So when Universal looks at me and they say, we're developing with Kevin, it's because we're partners. Mm -hmm. When Warner Brothers says, we're developing with Kevin, it's because we're partners. When Sony, we're partners. The world of being a work for hire was a great one, but the business in me won't allow that to last. The business is now about pulling other people up, embracing the opportunities that can be given. Opportunities that can be given. The first of <laughs> Earned. <laughs> It's given and earned. earned. Yes, right. Earned, well, it was right. given because I earned it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you'd been doing that with your stand up, though. You yes, own, you I own have. all your stand ups, right? Yes. I own really? All for real now, not just for well, radio. This is, this is not, once again, this is all researchable information. Mm -hmm. Well, not the, the one that I just shot. The, okay. That's Netflix. That's why they cut that check so they can. That's theirs. That $40 million. Dollars. And that was just 40, for one special? Uh, no, I'm doing two. Okay. I'm giving them two. So 20, 20, two $20 million specials. We don't need to get into that. You, the math is great. We <laughs> 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 need to get into that. But, uh, it was done along at the same time when uh, Rock, Chappelle, uh, Ellen, when we all we were all figuring it out. And I didn't know if I wanted to go theatrical again um, because, I, you know, I, Eddie Murphy, man, he's, he's up there. That, that $50 million number is a... Crazy numbers, the highest gross and standard special of all time. And, you know, I, I shot for it. I, I tried. I gave my all. Uh, I made the list and I have three specials on there, but that man sits at the top for a reason. That was done in 1986 or whatever. Mm -hmm. A stand up comedy concert grows $50 million, and that shows you how amazing this man was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, what's your highest that, one? Highest one is 36 or 32, something like that. Oh, okay. 30, okay. 38, 38. I saw one you one. had for 23. 23, 32. So Cat sold it's, more it's, than you because he did 24 with one of them. It's fiction. It's, it's not a fact. It's not a fact. He's poking. It's not a fact. He's not poking. I'm just saying that's, those no, aren't facts. Not he's, poking. he's not poking. He's doing his job. These are things that were said. I'm telling yeah. you that's not a fact. <laughs> this is all, once again, researchable information. Doesn't it feel like as the success comes and things get bigger for you, just so much more hate comes with it at times as well? You're like, damn. Especially you, the Tiff, because it seems like they love you on the way up, and then when you get there, it's like, oh, she ain't yeah. funny. Oh, she's this. Oh, she's that. But they love you when you're on your way up. Yeah, now all of a sudden it's, oh, she reinforces the negative stereotypes of black women. That's the movie, guys. I feel like I stole one of Tiffany's jokes on here one day and didn't credit you for it. Well, Good job, Ange. I think it was the dead, <laughs> the dead cockroach one. You know what I'm talking about? The dead cockroach with guys. Ange, are you trying to clear your conscience right now? What's going on? <laughs> 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 I feel like, what the fuck is going on here? You trying to get in the head? What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> like I said it one day and everybody thought it was so funny. I was like, I think I got that from Tiffany Haddish. Yeah, you did, but I'm not tripping. What was that joke? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to repeat it. It's yours now. You can have it. You can have it. How does it feel to come up on that come up and now people change up on you or switch up on you? A little well, bit? I expect it. I mean, that's a part of the process. I've been researching and studying inter the entertainment business for a long time, and that's part of the process. They love you for a minute, then they hate on you, then they love you again and they hate on you it's like a dysfunctional relationship does it ever bother and, you uh not really no because my check is getting bigger and bigger so continue to hey continue to be a publicist for free but that's i mean that's real. where that's where the relationship has to come in you know as a guy that's seen it from all sides and, and we see it happen to you too i've seen the love i've seen the hate I've, I've seen it this is where it's my job to educate and make her understand this is the movie mm -hmm. this is the this is the most watched movie ever the most watched movie in the world is the rise of a star, mm -hmm. the fall of a star, and the fight back of a rise. Right. That's the most watched movie in the world. You can go through a list of stars that you've seen done it. And it's just how people, it's just what we're trained to do. Yeah. Because you live in a world where some people love negativity. Yeah. Some people love it. Negativity drives the world that you guys are in. Negativity drives the world of blogs. It drives the world of news. People love to see it. It's something that we embrace. So until you realize and understand negativity can't penetrate my armor unless I allow it to, then you're, you're not going to be okay. You have to have that realization. 
So in entertainment, if she doesn't have the knowledge and the thick skin that she now has because of the fucking conversations I've beat in her head. Mm-hmm. Don't you read that? Don't also, you let that get Also, from my you? upbringing, I mean, I grew up in foster care. One minute I'm in the most wonderful home, next thing I'm snatched out to the next thing thinking nobody nobody there cared about me. So mm-hmm. I've been trained and built for this. My mama used to talk mess about me and then next second love and kiss on me. So to me, this is I was made for this. I'm built for it. So y'all can talk all the shit y'all want to talk. I'm still going to be smiling at you because I know in a minute you're going to be like, dang, I love what you said right there. That made me feel good. So I'm going to keep it pushing. I love how you protect and uh, you know Tiff in this situation, but how do you protect you know other artists, including her, just in the business period? I protect them so they don't make the same mistakes you made coming. I up. protect them by giving them the opportunity. Mm-hmm. I protect them by being an open book and an example. I don't I don't sit in front of you as a perfect man. I don't portray myself to be a perfect man, flawed and all. I stand on the platform that I stand on. You get to see the hard work and effort that was put into my craft, and in return, mm-hmm. I take it and I say, hey man. I can't wait to see the next version of what I am, if not bigger. Mm. I can't wait to see the next version of the next generation that surpasses all this amazing shit that I'm doing and that uh, that creates other opportunities for others. I got to see a blueprint that so many did before me, and I took what I saw and I said, how can I be different? What impact can I have? Mm-hmm. So when you say, how do I change or how do I have an effect on them? My effect is by saying, hey, man, take this. Use this for whatever you feel you can. And when you get the opportunity that you feel you're going to get from this, don't fuck it up. Be better than me. You got to see what I did. You saw Mm -hmm. Blueprint live in person. Be better than me. That's what I feel that the people in our craft of comedy, which is one of the hardest goddamn professions to make it in, because you're being judged on a joke-to-joke basis. So when you're a person that sits in this chair that's in this field, Come on, man, you got no choice but to support the ones that made it out that gauntlet. Mm-hmm. That's a gauntlet. To get through the gauntlet? How y'all feel, man? Everybody all right? Fuck you! All right, come on now. <laughs> you know, started, that's, that's interesting. You said that even when people are hating, when they can name five or six black comedians, that's big. Because right. usually it's only one. Huge. Yeah. Huge. That's why I was so taken back, like at the shot for Rel. Like, Rel, I'm, I couldn't be prouder. Of Rel. I couldn't be more happy. He's like the great nicest guy. guy. How you He's a Rel? fucking great guy, man. Mm-hmm. That man don't bother nobody. Yeah. Do you find mm-hmm. him attractive, though? Hey, look, man, that's 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 not for me to determine. <laughs> okay? Look, that's all relevant. Rel's doing all right. I don't know that's why relevant. that bothered me when he said that. Rel's doing all right. <laughs> Rel's got, he's got kids. He's got, you know? Somebody like, yeah, come on, yeah, somebody find him. He bust off at somebody. <laughs> <laughs> somebody. Somebody was okay with it. What are you talking about? You don't, you don't let that happen to something that you feel is is disgusting. <laughs> That's a mutual agreement right there. <laughs> and, and you, you helped Rel out early with his stand-up special, Rel. Mm-hmm. I was lucky enough for Rel to allow me to help him out. I came to Rel as a fan. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm a fan. I would love to produce your special. I would love to do it. I would love to do it and, and tell me how I can make it okay for you. Me and Rel had a conversation. I said, I want you to do it your way. I just want to help. He allowed me to do that. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that he took that and ran with it, man. I'm a, I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of the craft. I'm a fan. I am a fan. I can't say it enough. I love comedy. I love the art and craft of comedy. I love watching the ones that did it before me, and I love watching the ones that are coming up after me. If you take nothing else from this interview, nothing. If you take nothing else, fucking take the fact that I want to see other people win and I'm not selfish with my position. I wasn't blessed in giving this opportunity to shit on others. That's not how I look at it. And if I'm wrong, like I said, please tell me and tell me how I should handle it. Tell me how I should be handling my level of success and then I'll correct it. So for all of our black people out there that want to see more people of color in a position where they're winning, ask yourself if you're a part of the solution or the problem. Mm. It's that simple. It's that simple. We love you for being honest, man. One of the things that you're super honest about that's been like, Intriguing me lately is like the fact that you be getting your head dyed and your beard dyed because I got yeah. grace problems. Yeah, it's fucked up up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucked up but up he up has hair at least. No, no, no. This, he uh, does have I'm being honest. He does have yeah, hair. No, 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 no. I, I definitely got a dye heme. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's the only dude out here that's honest about yeah, it. I, yeah, he is. No, but here's the thing, though. No, I, I think I was using the wrong color for a minute <laughs> because, <laughs> because of my shit. Dark brown or black? No, I was going dark brown, but when it go back, my shit get a, 
My shit turned like a dirty brine. Like, uh, yeah, hey, one girl, hey, you washing your head? She's like, your head look dirty. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? This ain't nobody's head. This is my natural color. I'm, I'm thinking about getting something for the bed. I do beer, but you gotta go light. The one thing you don't want, you don't want that, uh, you don't want that goddamn highway streak on your face. You don't want to go too dark. You don't want to go too dark and be out there looking like you can't move your face. <laughs> you know, not the Beijing. I don't, I don't do that. Oh, so it's not Beijing. No, no, no I don't no. do that. Fuck oh, you got no. some rich shit, nigga. No, even no. when you wiped your forehead, just now ain't nothing came no, no, off. No, you gotta nothing. go a good product. The last thing you want to do, especially when you married, is get up from a pillowcase <laughs> with a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> when well, you gotta explain yourself. No, no, no. I wash my hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's to die. It's, it's the Beijing. The Beijing is coming out. That's so it's not the shade of secret. No, what is it not then? I'm not gonna do that publicly because it's my secret. I tell you off here though. <laughs> I tell you off here. I got a nice product, man. And you know, I here's the thing, you can't overdo it. Right. Like if you if you if you a guy out there and you suffering from that, you know, from that other side, you know, I'm about to be forty next mm-hmm. year. So it's coming. It's on my ass. I feel it. Mm-hmm. So you can't over die. Do it when it's necessary. Sometimes embrace the gray. Let that shit go out and just look like Look like Morgan Freeman for a good two weeks. Just accept it, <laughs> accept it, and then and then after that, surprise him. Surprise hit everybody with the young back. you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who trying to go dance? <laughs> Night school is out next week. Make sure you go check it out. Make sure you support. So listen, if all these people apologize, it'll be all good, right? Listen, I'm not here for drama, brother. Okay, it's not about the apology. It's not about like me and Cat don't ever have to talk, or we can't talk. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect me anyway. I am about support that's it i'm about support i'm about growth and for me to be where i am and to say the things that i can say it's because i have the knowledge and i know Mm -hmm. so if we're really trying to see change then Mm -hmm. let's support those that are embracing and marching towards making that happen that's it that's it it's not about the apology it's about change i'm gonna support that man i'm gonna be a fan forever whether i like him or whether we don't like each other i'm a fan because i'm a fan of his talent Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with that I want to make that very clear. This has nothing to do with that. This is not a beef. This is correcting what you said that you know you shouldn't have said. This is about you embracing your fails, your fuck-ups, and you acknowledging what you did and stop pointing the finger at everybody else. Eventually, you got to point it back to you. Eventually. You got to do this. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> call the 105 right now, 800 585 1051. You get a four pack of tickets to see a screening of Night School hosted by Charlemagne. Yes. Mm. And Charlemagne said he's buying one box well, of popcorn. Well, now I got rich people. You know what I'm saying? Kev, you just got $40 million from a Netflix special. Well, no, that's, no, 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 Listen, it's September 25th. Would. It's only 300 people. I'll right. buy the popcorn. You buy the popcorn too? I'll buy the popcorn. Tip got it. it. He said, right. woo. <laughs> Tip got it. Tip got it. You got I got soda. it. If she got the popcorn, you got the soda. Yes, that there can work. Not one soda. For everybody. I was going to buy one for the theater. You said for the theater. No, no, no. Not oh. one for the theater. Okay. For everybody. He's going to come with there them leaders from the That's Dollar good. Tree. Exactly. exactly. Boy, and ain't no, nothing like having a good will, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Tiff. Way to step up to the plate on that one. And Tiff will be back here. Tiff got two more movies coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are the movies? Tell them. Oh, I got the Oath coming out in October, and then I got another movie called Nobody's Fool coming out in November. Aren't you on TV too? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm on TV <laughs> on the show called The Last OG, mm. and I got some more Groupon commercials coming, and I got some seasoning. So, and what are you Netflix working special? on releasing on Netflix? Oh, and my Netflix specials coming, and then I'm also gonna bring up six other comics in that special too. What do you and mean? I'm, I'm doing a Tiffany Haddish presents my favorite comedians, and it's like comics that have been doing comedy for more than ten years that deserve a chance to shine. Hold mm. on, so you mean to tell me you gotten put in, put in a position of power, and so now you're putting other people on? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh. That's what yeah, my big go. brother taught me. Wow. Mm. It gets transferred concept. down, man. Uh, give me a second. I want to run down the stuff I got going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys got a second? Just before we get out of here, we got a second. Okay. I just need a good 67 seconds. That time get out earlier. Uh, okay. First and foremost, night school. That's the priority, guys. Please go out support this movie September 28th. Yep. Like I said, there's a big meaning behind it. First movie underneath the production company of mine, Heartbeat Production. So I need your support. Other than that, got a drama coming out. It's called The Upside. Me, Brian Cranston, and Nicole Kidman. That's dropping January 11th. A drama. That's yeah, a stretch drama. for you, Kev. This is, this is going to be, it's a, it's a great look. I can't wait for people to see it. Mm-hmm. Secret Life of Pets 2. Get ready for that one. I'm in that Tiff's too. In that too. Tiff is in that okay. too. That's why I brought it up because you forgot to say it. Uh, uh, I don't also, know when it's coming. Well, I do. That's my okay. job, Tiff. That's why I'm your big brother. Okay. <laughs> 2019, you're getting hit with that. Uh, the tour, Irresponsible Tour. I'm on my last three months. We're wrapping that up strong. Uh, big cities coming up. If you don't have your tickets, go get them. KevinHeartNation.com. Also, Filming Jumanji 2. At the Filming Jumanji 2 
working on another animation, working on a comedy called Little Kev, and that's gonna be about my life. But me being told, I'm telling this life through uh, through the little version of me with an adult voice. It's pretty dope. So it's the same. So, it's same, just you yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> Typecast, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you say it like that, yes, uh, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Uh, and more importantly, man, laugh out loud network. Go see it. Uh, download the app. Uh, amazing comedy faces, young, old, new, all. Go to the app. Go see this world of Kiyama, a comedy that we created. It's about giving opportunities, like I said, to this young generation. So did I, I say I got that. a movie coming out with Melissa McCarthy as well? No, oh. I forgot that too. Oh yeah, the kitchen. And that's a, yeah, the kitchen. Yeah, and that's a gangster movie. Go you. Yeah, Go I'm you. learning from you. Give me one more. Yeah, High I five. also got a cartoon coming out on Netflix called Two Can and Birdie. Hey. Oh <laughs> shit! Oh wait, 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 <laughs> yeah, I got another I movie I'm doing with Rose Byrne yeah, that's coming 2019 as well. That's a comedy. Hey. Unlimited Partners, I'm producing that too. Oh, okay, wow. okay. Yeah. Did, you get, did you get more for your Netflix special than Monique? Don't say that. Don't, don't, don't say that. <laughs> Thank you guys for the time. <laughs> we love you guys. Uh, this has been real. You know, this is what it's about. Kevin Hart. That's good. That's good. Thank you guys. And we got and we, and we do have to say congratulations about you guys are both up here. Honestly, I know we're all cool with each other and we joke around a lot, but that's huge that you guys are doing so much, so many big things. So congratulations to Tiffany and thank to you. Kevin. You thank guys you guys. Inspirational. Absolutely. We love thank y'all. you. Thank love you. Y'all. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. It's the yes. Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> 